closing in on Japanese-held positions on New Guinea, second largest island in the world, Australian jungle fighters struggle through some of the world's worst combat terrain. Fording streams and climbing trails up the sheer sides of mountain ridges, they haul every ounce of their supplies by manpower alone. Fighting under exhausting conditions, these courageous Australians are playing a major role in pushing back the Japs in this far-flung theater of war. In sunny Italy, part of which is blanketed by snow, New Zealanders fight on a front far removed from their homeland in the South Pacific. Taking a lesson in camouflage from Soviet ski troops, they move up, supported by Italian Alpine units now fighting with the Allies. South of Rome, the beach at Anzio looks peaceful enough here. But actually, this is the scene of some of the bitterest fighting of the war. German prisoners are still coming in. Here, the Nazis lost 24,000 troops killed, wounded, and captured. Some are from the famous Hermann Goering Division, poured into the lines to try and stem the fierce attacks of the Allies. Prisoners receive the same expert medical care that is given every allied soldier. From minor wounds to major operations calling for blood plasma, friend and foe are treated alike. American army nurses are right at the front to care for the wounded. They draw field rations just like the men and are prepared to stay as long as they're needed. This is typical of the spirit with which American girls are following the flag. Constantly under fire, the beachhead is attacked by a lone Nazi plane, and the pilot is shot down in flames. Such is this latest glimpse of war in Italy, as the Allies gather their forces for the blow the Nazis know is to come. <music> Flying over snow-covered mountains on America's east coast, planes simulate the search for a lost pilot. By radio, contact is made with the rescue party on the ground. From the air, a doctor parachutes to Earth with emergency medicines and supplies. A dog team sets out to meet the lost airman. Supposedly hurt, but on his feet, he has made snowshoes from twigs. Now they've found him, and life-giving blood plasma is administered. The doctor holds the precious bottle against his body to keep it from freezing. Dogs trained for rescue work in Arctic climbs haul the sled over the trail. They encounter many hazards, but dogs and men are accustomed to such obstacles. And here's how they cross a perilous ravine. Last comes the wounded pilot. Now safe and sound, he's on his way to the base. A naval academy located in southern Italy is again training large classes of cadets to become officers in the Italian Merchant Marine. Aboard training ships anchored before the academy, the cadets learn seamanship in one of the real old-timers. Hand over hand, they scale the rigging like veteran salts. Here is one of the ways in which young Italy is being equipped to man the ships of the future.
rocket guns at an American army base serve a new purpose. They're loaded with rocket targets to be fired aloft to test the speed and accuracy of anti-aircraft guns. To hurtle through space at more than 450 miles an hour, the rocket targets travel at speeds greater than the fastest aircraft. This is a sample of the terrific barrage now being hurled skyward to meet the enemy's raiders. and American sailors on leave at a North Atlantic base enjoy winter sports with a tug of war. Healthy, friendly rivalry between the fighting men of two great allied nations. Some of the British boys try to emulate Scandinavian ski stars. Snowshoes or skis a few days ashore is a welcome change for men who sail the seven seas. The new United States aircraft carrier Shangri-La, named for the mythical base from which American flyers bombed Tokyo, is sponsored by Mrs. Doolittle, wife of the man who led the raid. Two years ago, President Roosevelt decorated Major Doolittle, now a Major General, for his daring feat. It was from the carrier Hornet that Doolittle and his 79 valiant flyers prepared for their surprise attack. President Roosevelt called the Hornet Shangri-La when asked to reveal the base from which the huge B-25 bombers took off. Now, before a crowd of 100,000 people, Mrs. Doolittle launches the new carrier. And a real 27,000-ton Shangri-La goes to join the great fleets of United Nations warships. <laughs> 